I like this show a lot. Oh, I gotta find this guy. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week, we're in Solvang, California, the Danish capital of America, for the Wheels and Windmills show. This is a really cool town. As you might expect, there's a few windmills here, but today, there's some amazing cars. Let's get around and check some of these babies out. Well, that's a really nice wagon. Check it out. Wow, Baldwin Roadster. What's that? Hey, Bob. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> Thank you very much for being oh, here. Oh, man, thanks for having us. This is such a cool town. Solvang is such an interesting place. It's, the, what, the Danish capital of, of America? Of America, yes, sir, it is. And it actually is legally that. It is legally that. It is legally the that. The Danes even look at That's it that right. way, right? Their king came here and basically blessed this place. He said, this works. This is the Danish <laughs> capital of, the, of America. Well, it's a, it is a beautiful town. I mean, it's a, you know, obviously a festival town, and this is quite a festival you got going today. Wheels and windmills, right? Correct. And there are a lot of windmills here in town, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've noticed. There's also today, a lot of wheels. How long have you guys been doing this show? Actually, this is our 14th year in Solvang. And this is actually our 20th anniversary of putting on the show. Oh, wow. We did the show for six years in a small town called Buellton. Well, actually, last night we were over there. There's the Mendenhall Museum, oh, yeah. which is, <laughs> there's some amazing stuff over there, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, and I can't believe what's come out here today. This is really an interesting collection of cars. But I've talked to a lot of people who've been here many years running. They come here because it's such a cool place and such a cool show. Yes. Most of my committee are car guys. Yeah. We do this. We have our cars, we go out to the shows. So we wanted to put on a show that was for the car, car guys. guys. <laughs> car and guys that's and what girls. you're seeing. Yeah. And then no, we've and been it's doing got that it for 20 years. You guys know what you're doing. Again, the setting is just, Bob, the setting is so cool. The town, I just love the town. But some just dynamite cars. What do you say, let's go look at a few of them before it gets too crazy. Hey, I love All to right, look at the cars. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Kevin, I love this car. <laughs> Actually, I saw you rolling around last night. We were in a neighboring town coming back, and I see this car. It's a 62 Merc Monterey, right? Exactly. It's the only year they made this body style. It is really unique. Did they come two-tone to begin with, or are they all one color? It was all single tone. The blue is a lightning blue from a Mini Cooper, and the gray is gray metallic from a Honda. You know, it really works so well together. And, you know, you've smoothed your bumpers. I did. And it looks like you've chromed this grill here. Was that originally chrome, or that, that... No, they're more anodized. Yeah, yeah. This uh. looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> and your badging, too. That looks new. You're never going to find that. That's the holy <laughs> grail of trying to find those. I couldn't find any, so I had a guy oh, make really? them. really? So custom made. Wow. This trim here, the side trim, mm -hmm. is stainless? Stainless. This is all factory. It comes that way. Man, oh man. Nice wheels too. What are you, what are uh, these are made by Schott. And uh -huh. you notice there's no lug nuts. And then uh, how about the interior? Are these yeah. the original seat frames? The original seat frames and console out of what's called the S55 model, which was maybe a... The sport model. The sport kind. model. Uh, mine came with a bench seat. So uh -huh. I took those out, had them refabricated. Uh, kind of stock dash, but you added a few gauges? Yes. So added a few gauges. The steering wheel is aftermarket. Yeah. That cowl above the gauges uh, the has been there? modified. The little hood. The, uh -huh. the, uh, Mercury's don't come with that. And then that instrument cluster looks stock, but that's actually decoded digital. Oh, wow. But I tell you, this is what makes this car. This rear quarter, and I don't think Ford ever did anything that looked like this. This almost Mopar, almost Caddy. It's the only year that they did this, and I can't tell you how many people come up and just, you know, focus uh. in on this. <laughs> and these are NOS lenses, and I have about three sets at home that I will not give or sell to anybody. Well, if you find them, you buy them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really exactly. Do the same thing back here, smooth out the bumpers and everything? Smooth out the bumpers. Otherwise, everything else here is stock. Now, you did mention it. You've got something pretty special under the hood, uh, too. Just... Let's, let's go look at it. All right. Yeah, you see, you had it open earlier. And I saw that and I said, wow, that's, uh, that's quite an engine. <laughs> what it's not is... stock. No, it's not stock. <laughs> <laughs> what I have here is a uh, Ford Coyote crate engine. Wow. Uh, this is a Gen 2, so it's the latest one that they make. Um, and then I put a Borla 8-stack induction on top of it. You know, that's a, that's a really wide engine. Did it fit in there okay? 
Um, it was shoehorned in there. I had plenty of room on the depth, but you can see, you can barely fit your finger in there between that and the upper yeah, arm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then <laughs> everything under here appears to be painted or powder coated. Kevin, it just looks fantastic all around. In 1962, Merck Monterey convertible with a Coyote engine in it. Wow, I love this car. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Bo, this is uh, one of the weirdest cars here. <laughs> one of the weirdest cars I think yeah. I've ever seen, but really a, a, an amazing piece of engineering. This is a, what, a 52 Plymouth? Yes. It yeah. sure don't look like a 50. No. I guess it kind of does here. Yeah. But that's where it ends. You built all this, yes, yes. OK. And you also use the original frame. Is that right? Yeah, the frame has not been cut at all. It's a stock wheelbase. But I just shortened the cab area about 18 inches out of the hood and yeah. front clip, scooted the cab forward like a cab forward design to yeah. give me the stumpy front end and then added the 18 inches about in here. Started with flat steel, yes. English wheel? Yes, no and kidding. some knee, knee bending. Yeah. <laughs> of course, how do you miss <laughs> yeah. the insane placement yeah. of the engine? This oh, is a yeah. mid-engine car. You got a full cage yep. and you know all the race gears. I've been to the drag strip quite a few times, and they were scared at first. They didn't know what to think. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this engine. I mean, this is a crazy setup, mid-engine. Yeah. First of all, a really big engine. What yeah. are you running? It's a 440 Mopar. This is all still Mopar drivetrain, but it is now a 520 cubic inch. What's the carburetor setup? They're old uh, Predator carburetors that were big. They really are. They really are. They were big in the 70s and 80s, mainly with monster trucks and stuff. Yeah. And then what's your blower? It's a 871 Dyer's blower. Oh. What's the yeah. transmission on? Uh, the transmission is still a Chrysler 727. Yeah. But it's a shorty out of a, a Winnebago with a two-piece drive shaft, which was kind of what did it for me because I'm out of room back here. Yeah. So you come back here to a, a quick change, basically? I had a V-Drive built for this application, and then the differential is an eight and three-quarter Chrysler built and flipped upside down to run backwards. The gears run in the same direction, but it's just upside down. So this it forms as an in and out box back to the diff. And uh, I had to pull it way over to the side, as you can see. Yeah, this is a magnificent piece of engineering. Thank you. Thank you. It doesn't fire up, does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, could we, could we fire oh yeah. Up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It fire up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, that's insane. Yeah. And, and I respect that. What? <laughs> well, uh, Jeff, I got to believe this is the only one of these here. It's, it's <laughs> one of one. One of one. This is a, a 1937 Morris 8. Morris right? 8. From New Zealand. From Auckland, New Zealand. From Auckland, New Zealand. Actually, a baker Not delivery. Oakland, California. Not Oakland, California. Auckland, New Zealand. Auckland, New Zealand. <laughs> It was actually a bakery delivery van for 40 years. So it really was. It really this, was. Isn't, this is really what it was. A working delivery van for Empire Bakery. These things are so simple. Now, is this cast? What is that? No, well, that's a pressed piece that is a, a fake front, and then the radiator's just behind that. And did you have to re-chrome or, or? I re-chromed it, yeah, re-chromed it, and then sent the, uh, the badge off to a fellow in uh, Australia who re-enameled the badge. Being a, a, an Australia or New Zealand car, right. it's going to be right-hand drive. Right. There's not a heck of a lot to the interior. No, it's pretty Spartan, but it has a full gauge package. Amps, fuel, oil pressure, speedometer, of course. And this car is, uh, we call it the Dragonfly. Okay. Because it drags up one side of the hill and we fly down the other. <laughs> is it a four speed or is it a three? A three speed. Three speed. Yeah, three speed. First gear is stump puller. Uh -huh. Second gear is around town. Third gear, real, 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 real high. A nice headliner. Well, yep. I wouldn't well, call it headliner. It's all mahogany. It's all, all mahogany headliner. Man, oh man. And then this is what, a broadcloth or a what? It's like a duck canvas that's stretched over. Uh huh. And then a birch outside too? Birch on the outside. And man. then the cool part about it is that it's steam bent. And you can tell it's a handmade car if you step back here a little bit. Because they're not the if same. If you look at that stringer there. Oh, it's. If you look at that stringer there. <laughs> they're kind of cattywampus. And you would just open it up and put your, your stuff in there? Oh, how cool. Well, let's, let's close this back up because I've got to believe there's just some monstrous power plant under the hood there that we there must is. go look at. Let's there have a look. There it is. 
Where is it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> now, the reason why it's called a Morris 8. Yeah, there's only four it has cylinders. Eight horsepower. Eight whole horsepower. Eight horsepower. So it's a flathead, side valve, 900 cc's. Is electric, that the generator on top? That's the generator on top. Electric fuel pump. And a little uh, pump. SU car. No air filter because there's no place to put no it. No place to put one, yeah. Can't get it. But it has all the original tools, um, original jack, the wheel brace, original handbook. Wow. That lists everything. And, and it's, it's, that's not an original flashlight. And then the original flashlight. From 37? Yeah, the original flashlight. Oh my gosh. And all of this was all, with the car all when you with got the car it. When I got it. Oh, you had to be thrilled when this thing came. Oh, yeah, that's great. So, 1937 Morris, Morris 8, 8, Auckland, New Zealand bakery delivery truck. Correct. Wow, I love this baby. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> so right. cool. Well, John, this is sweet. You know, uh, this is a, what, a, this is a 66 Chevelle Malibu wagon, Yes. Right? You know what I think I like about this? It's just how stock this sucker is. This looks like it came off the showroom floor in 66, then you slapped some Kragers on it. Basically, yeah, and this is the factory color, which is marina blue. Right, classic color for this, oh, this yeah. era. I kept the color. I really think the Kragers work on this. They, you know, it's, again, giving it that period look right but you didn't change the gauging at all no the um all i did was aftermarket gauges over there just to keep eye on oil pressure and water temp so you know what's really going on yeah <laughs> that's it that's yeah important. instead of trusting lights <laughs> you know? the other thing i dig about this this roof rack which looks like a, a factory option was this it this was a factory option that chevrolet had even and with the wood grain in it yes this was the top of the line roof rack. roof rack oh man i think it makes the car well yeah i've been told that you know 60 66 and 67 weren't a heck of a lot different, were they? A lot of the sheet metal's the same, a little bit different taillights, and then in the front, they sharpen the nose just a tad. But you really gotta look close to tell yeah. them. Yeah, right. Yeah, man, it was so stock. I, I think you played with the engine a little bit, but let's go have a look at okay. it. Okay. Obviously, this is not the original engine. No. This is a 383 stroker. Oh, yeah. Approximately 425 horsepower. I mean, it's the same block and everything, right? I mean, it pretty it much dropped in there. Dropped in there. Same motor mount. No kidding. So does it drive nice? Oh, it drives like a dream. Like like it did in 66? Yeah. Oh, only a little faster. A little faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is a nice car. It's got a real California feel to me. You're right. It's yes. missing a surfboard. But that's almost cliche. This is really good. This is clean. It's right. I love it. 66 Chevelle Malibu, Malibu wagon. Wagon. John, thanks. Man. Thank you very much. Way cool car. Man, Mike, this is a classy car. It just, this just looks classy. It's a 57 DeSoto Sportsman. Sportsman Fireflight. This black and white, it's like a tuxedo. Very formal. I mean, it's immaculate. So was it black and white originally? No, it was yellow and white, which we discovered after we pulled off the fenders when we were working on it. Uh huh. But when I bought it, it was this color, and it looked so nice oh, and formal. It's, we kept it like that. It is so elegant. So, so have you re-chromed it and everything, or was, it, was that already done? The bumpers were good. <laughs> I uh -huh. did everything else. And are those the Chrysler wires? Uh, they're a knockoff, they're uh -huh. Wheelsmith. Okay. In the lineup, was this their biggest car? Yeah, all these models were the same size. I love the interior though. I mean, I just love these interiors of the 50s for Mopar. I mean, that's a correct pattern on the seat too, Yes, right? it is. Mm. All correct materials. Did yes. it have the Fireflight stitched in back yes, there? Yes, it did. I don't yeah. remember that. That's nice. And all stock gauges? That's all stock. That's all Man, original. I mean, yeah. you really brought it back to yeah. the, the way it was. The headline is really nice. The chrome bows. Yeah. I mean, this is, this, it's beautiful, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I think though, it's these fins that make this car and they're so extreme. It's almost caricature, isn't it? The neat thing about this, when I bought the car, these were all checked. These lenses are made in Australia. Uh, Repopped, you mean? Yes. And you know, I had heard that. I would heard they're doing that. And they're perfect. Man, because yeah. I mean, they're brand new. Brand they look new. brand new because they, they are brand, brand new. They are brand new. <laughs> now, originally the exhaust came out here, which just rusted the bumpers like crazy. But you, are you still doing that? Or? No, they oh, dumped down underneath. OK. Well, these also had pretty special engines. Let's go have a look. What do you say? Ah, yes. Here we are. The Fireflight Hemi. Yes. <laughs> what a great engine. Now that was a 341? It was originally 341. This block happens to be bored out 60, so it's 345. Wow. The same size as the Adventure, but uh, it only has a single carburetor on it, so it's maybe 300 horse. Oh, is that all? 
That's enough. <laughs> Interesting kind of crinkled paint on the uh, valve covers. Is that? That's the way this car came. I've seen others on pictures that have the, the smooth look yeah. to them. You know, I like it though. I, I don't think I've ever seen that, but I like that. And, and under here again, I mean, it just looks bone stock. You've done the whole thing to be pretty much bone stock, right? Yes. So <laughs> I just really love this car. 1957 DeSoto Sportsman Fireflight. Exactly. What a car. Thanks for bringing it out, Mike. Thanks, Dennis. Beauty. Oh man, the Wheels and Windmills show here in Solvang, California is one sweet show. I love this town. They bring in some cool cars. Check this one out.